the stillness of my small town was a constant in my life, a backdrop to the mundane routine of a college student. My days were filled with lectures, assignments, and the occasional night out with friends. Nothing ever seemed out of the ordinary until that fateful morning a week ago. I remember waking up, groggy and disoriented, feeling a strange emptiness in my mouth. As I sat up, I felt something roll off my tongue and heard a tiny clink as it hit the floor. Panic gripped me as I rushed to the mirror. The reflection that greeted me was horrifying. Gaps in my gums where my teeth used to be. But the terror didn't end there. In place of my normal, human teeth, there were small pointed buds, like the beginnings of new teeth, grotesquely misshapen and alien. I tried to rationalize it as a bizarre dream or an elaborate prank. But the blood on my pillow and the sharp pain in my gums told a different story. I frantically called my dentist, Dr. Harrow, securing an emergency appointment. He had been our family dentist for years, a kind man with a reassuring smile that now felt more necessary than ever. As I sat in the waiting room of Dr. Harrow's office, I could feel the eyes of the other patients on me. I kept my mouth firmly shut, the taste of blood and fear intermingling on my tongue. When Dr. Harrow finally called me in, his usual jovial demeanor faltered as he examined my mouth. This is highly unusual, Tony, he said, his voice laced with confusion. I've never seen anything like it. It could be a rare medical condition, but I'm not sure. I'll need to do some research. Try to stay calm and maintain good oral hygiene in the meantime. His words were meant to be comforting, but they offered me no solace. That night, as I lay in bed, the unease settled deep in my bones. I found myself slipping into a restless sleep, plagued by a dream that was vivid and terrifying. I was wandering through a shadowy version of my town, the familiar streets twisted into a macabre labyrinth. I was being pursued, not by a person, but by an oppressive, suffocating presence. The air was thick with the scent of decay, and the only sound was the echo of my own footsteps. Then, I saw them figures in the distance, their smiles white and grotesque, filled with sharp jagged teeth like mine. I woke up with a start, my heart pounding in my chest. The room was dark, the only light coming from the moon casting eerie shadows across my bed. I could feel the gaps in my teeth, the new ones even more pronounced now, sharp and foreign against my tongue. I got up and stumbled to the bathroom, dreading the reflection I would meet. The sight was worse than I feared. My mouth was a horror show of sharp uneven teeth, some blackened, others a sickly yellow. I felt a scream building in my chest but swallowed it down. I couldn't let my roommates hear. I couldn't let anyone see me like this. The next day, I avoided my friends, making excuses to skip classes and social gatherings. I spent hours scouring the internet for any medical condition that matched my symptoms, but found nothing. It was as if I was the only person in the world suffering from this nightmarish affliction. As the days passed, my isolation grew. I spoke to no one, barely ate, and only left my room for necessities. My world had shrunk to the confines of my small, dimly lit space, where I was haunted by the reflection of a stranger in the mirror. Trapped in my own world of fear and confusion, I felt a growing desperation to understand what was happening to me. The internet had failed me, so I turned to the local library, a place I had frequented for academic research, but never for something like this. The library, with its ancient books and dust lot and shelves, seemed like a fitting place to uncover hidden truths. I scoured through medical texts, folklore, and even obscure mythology, hoping to find anything that could explain the grotesque transformation my body was undergoing. Hours turned into days, and the library became my refuge, a place where I didn't have to hide my disfigured mouth. It was on one of these days, while I was buried in a stack of old books, that I stumbled upon something peculiar. It was a journal, leather-bound and worn, its pages yellowed with age. The title was etched in faded gold letters. The Chronicles of the Cursed Bloodline. My hands trembled as I opened it, a sense of foreboding washing over me. The journal was written by an ancestor of mine, someone I had never heard of in our family stories. As I delved into the pages, I found eerie similarities between his experiences and mine. He wrote of teeth falling out and being replaced by monstrous ones, of being shunned and feared. But what chilled me to the bone were his mentions of a transformation, a change that went beyond the physical. Nightmares began to plague me, more vivid and terrifying than before. In these dreams, I was not just running from the shadowy figures, but I was becoming one of them. My reflection in the dream was a twisted version of myself, with a mouth full of sharp animalistic teeth. I would wake up sweating and panting, the line between dream and reality blurring. As my appearance continued to change, I saw fear in the eyes of those few who saw me. My friends stopped calling, and I overheard whispers about my condition. The isolation was crushing, but it also drove me to delve deeper into the journal. I learned about a curse placed upon my bloodline, a punishment for a forgotten sin committed by my ancestors. The journal spoke of a transformation into something non-human, a fate that seemed increasingly inevitable for me. But amidst the grim revelations, there was a glimmer of hope. The author hinted at a way to reverse the curse, though the details were maddeningly vague. Driven by a mix of fear and determination, I continued my research. I needed answers, and I needed them soon. The thought of losing my humanity, of becoming a creature of nightmares, was too much to bear. 
I clung to the hope that somewhere in these ancient pages lay the key to my salvation. Days melted into nights as I pored over the cryptic writings in the journal, desperately seeking a solution. My world had shrunk to the confines of my dimly lit room and the musty aisles of the library. The physical changes in my mouth had become more pronounced, and I could no longer ignore the alien feeling of the sharp, uneven teeth that now filled my mouth. Eating had become a painful chore, and I often found myself avoiding my reflection, unable to face the monstrous visage that stared back at me. The nightmares continued, each more vivid and terrifying than the last. In these dreams, I roamed the shadowy streets of my town, not as a human, but as something else something primal and terrifying. The boundary between waking and sleeping blurred until I wasn't sure what was real anymore. My friends had all but abandoned me, their texts and calls having ceased days ago. The isolation nodded my sanity. I missed the sound of human voices, the warmth of human interaction. Even my own voice had become foreign to me, the words distorted by the strange teeth that filled my mouth. In my loneliness, I turned to the journal for souls. The author, my ancestor, had experienced the same isolation and fear. His words were called comfort, a reminder that I was not the first to endure this curse. I began to notice changes in my senses. Sounds were sharper, smells more potent. I could hear the scuttling of insects in the walls of my apartment, the distant sound of a dog barking miles away. My eyesight, once reliant on glasses, was now clear and focused, especially at night. These changes only served to heighten my sense of dread, a constant reminder of the inhuman transformation that was overtaking me. One evening, as I was leafing through the journal, a loose page fell out. It was a detailed drawing of a ritual, accompanied by cryptic instructions. My heart raced as I studied it. The ritual promised a reversal of the curse, but at a grave cost a sacrifice. The nature of the sacrifice was not specified, but the ominous tone of the text left me with a deep sense of unease. Despite my fear, I knew that this ritual might be my only chance to regain my humanity. I wrestled with the moral implications of the sacrifice, the weight of the decision bearing down on me. Could I go through with it, knowing the potential cost? Could I live with myself afterward? As these thoughts consumed me, the line between my nightmares and reality became increasingly blurred. I began to see the shadowy figures from my dreams in my waking hours, lurking in the corners of my vision. I could feel their presence, oppressive and judging, as if they were waiting for me to make my choice. The descent into madness was gradual yet unrelenting. Each day chipped away at my sanity, leaving me a shell of the person I once was. The once familiar streets of my town now felt alien and menacing, the faces of passers-by twisted into grotesque expressions in my mind. I was at a crossroads, faced with an impossible choice. The ritual lay before me, a beacon of hope in the darkness, but its cost was a chasm that threatened to swallow my soul. The creature I was becoming beckoned me to embrace my new nature, to give in to the primal instincts that clawed at the edges of my mind. The decision lay heavily upon me, a burden that I could either bear nor escape. I knew that whatever choice I made, there would be no turning back. The path ahead was shrouded in darkness, and I stood at its threshold, trembling with fear and uncertainty. The night I chose to confront my fate was moonless, the sky a blanket of unyielding darkness. My apartment felt more like a prison than a home, the walls closing in on me with each passing hour. The ritual instructions lay on the table, a constant reminder of the choice I had to make. I felt like I was teetering on the edge of an abyss, the darkness below calling to me with a siren's song. I decided to visit Dr. Harrow, hoping for some semblance of rational explanation or perhaps a last-ditch solution. His office, usually a place of sterile calm, was deserted. The reception area was dark, the only light coming from the street lamps outside casting long, ominous shadows. A sense of foreboding washed over me as I stepped inside. The door to Dr. Harrow's office was ajar, and as I pushed it open, my heart sank. The room was in disarray, papers strewn about, and the familiar dental equipment lay abandoned. On the desk, amidst the chaos, were symbols and cryptic notes that mirrored those in the journal. It was as if Dr. Harrow had been consumed by the same obsession that had taken hold of me. A chill ran down my spine as I realized I was truly alone in this nightmare. There was no professional help, no rational explanation, just the cold, hard truth of the curse that had ensnared me. I left the office with a heavy heart, the weight of my isolation more palpable than ever. The town around me felt surreal, like a stage set for a play in which I was the unwilling protagonist. The once familiar streets twisted into a labyrinth of shadows and fears, each turn taking me deeper into the heart of my own terror. As I wandered aimlessly, the line between reality and the nightmares that plagued my sleep blurred. The figures from my dreams seemed to materialize in the darkness, their twisted smiles and haunting eyes following me as I moved. I found myself drawn to the outskirts of the town, to a place where the urban landscape gave way to the wild, untamed nature. Here, the ritual would take place, a last stand against the darkness that threatened to consume me. The ritual was complex, requiring precise steps and incantations that I had memorized from the journal. Each word felt like a betrayal of my humanity, a step closer to the unknown. I had gathered the necessary items, each one a symbol of the life I was leaving behind. As I began the ritual, the air around me grew colder, the darkness deepening. 
I could feel the presence of the shadowy figures closing in, their whispers like daggers in my mind. The boundary between this world and the next end, the veil lifting to reveal the horrors that lay beyond. The climax of the ritual was a moment suspended in time, a choice that would seal my fate. I stood at the precipice, the darkness beckoning me forward. The sacrifice demanded by the ritual lay before me, a choice that would either save or damn me. In that moment, I was both the hunter and the hunted, the predator and the prey. I was Tony, but also something else, something older and far more terrifying. The choice I made would echo through the ages, a testament to the human will to survive or the surrender to the darkness within. As the ritual reached its zenith, I felt a surge of power, a primal force that threatened to overwhelm me. The air crackled with energy, the ground beneath me vibrating with the force of the ancient magic I had unleashed. Then, in a flash of blinding light, the world went silent. The shadows receded, the whispers fading into nothingness. I stood alone in the clearing, the remnants of the ritual scattered around me. The transformation was complete, but the nature of my new existence was yet to be revealed. I was caught in the liminal space between human and monster, my fate hanging in the balance. The night had been harrowing, a journey through the darkest corners of my soul. As dawn broke, I realized that the nightmare was not over. It had only just begun. The ritual had changed me, but whether it was a salvation or a damnation, only time would tell. The shadows of the night still lingered, a reminder that the darkness was never far away. The first light of dawn brought no solace to my tormented mind. As I gazed upon my hands in the pale morning light, they seemed both familiar and alien. The ritual had left its mark, a transformation that was both internal and external. The once sharp unnatural teeth in my mouth had reverted to a semblance of normalcy, yet the sensation within me was anything but ordinary. I made my way back to my apartment, each step heavy with the weight of the night's events. The town, bathed in the soft light of morning, felt like a hollow shell, a facade hiding the true darkness that lurked beneath. Once home, I avoided the mirror, fearful of what I might see. The ritual had exacted its toll, the details of which were still unclear to me. My body felt different, movements accompanied by a subtle, unsettling fluidity. The isolation that had been my prison now became my sanctuary. I could not face the world, not until I understood the extent of the changes that had befallen me. Days turned into weeks, each passing hour a reminder of the strange limbo in which I existed. The changes were subtle yet profound. My senses were heightened to an almost animalistic degree. Sounds were sharper, smells more distinct. I could hear the whispers of the wind, the secrets it carried from far off places. My nights were restless, filled with dreams that were vivid tapestries of memory and fantasy. The journal, my ancestral guide through this nightmare, lay open on my table, its pages a roadmap of my descent. The rituals and lore within spoke of a world hidden from human eyes, a realm where shadows reigned. I began to venture out at night, the darkness a cloak that shielded me from prying eyes. The town, so familiar by day, was transformed under the cloak of night. I moved through the streets like a ghost, unseen and unheard. The people I once knew seemed like distant memories, their lives continuing in blissful ignorance of the horrors that existed just beyond their perception. I envied them, even as I pitied them. They were safe in their mundane reality, while I had been thrust into a nightmare from which there was no waking. As the weeks turned into months, I realized that the transformation was not complete. The ritual had altered me, but it was only the beginning of a journey that was far from over. I was caught between worlds, belonging to neither yet bound to both. My existence became a solitary one, a vigil in the shadows. I watched the town from afar, a silent guardian against the darkness that I had once feared. The ritual had changed me in ways I could not have imagined, but it had also given me a purpose. I was no longer Tony, the college student with a mundane life. I was something else, a creature of the night, a dweller in the shadows. My fate was my own, a path that I walked alone. As I embraced my new existence, I realized that the nightmare I had feared was not an end, but a beginning. A new chapter in an ancient story, a tale as old as time itself. The darkness was no longer something to be feared, but a part of me, a part that I had come to accept. The transformation was complete, but the journey was just beginning. The shadows called to me, whispering secrets of the night. And I answered, a child of darkness born anew. As the first anniversary of that fateful night approached, I found myself standing at the edge of the woods, gazing at the town that had once been my entire world. The transformation had left me straddling two realities the human world and something much older, darker, yet equally real. I had learned to embrace the night, to find comfort in its embrace. The darkness was no longer a source of fear, but a sanctuary where I could be my true self, free from the judging eyes of those who would never understand. My nightly wanderings had become a ritual, a time for reflection and connection with the shadowy realm I now inhabited. I had seen things, experienced sensations that were beyond human comprehension. The ritual had opened a door, and I had stepped through it, leaving my old life behind. In this new existence, I was a silent observer, a guardian of the balance between light and dark. The town continued its sleepy, mundane existence, unaware of the forces that moved in the shadows. I watched over it, protecting it from the darker things that lurked just beyond the veil. 
despite my transformation, a part of me remained human, clinging to memories of a life that was no longer mine. I miss the simple joys of human interaction, the warmth of a smile, the comfort of a conversation. But I knew that my place was no longer among them. I was something else now, a creature of the night. I had returned to my apartment only once since that night. It was a surreal experience, like visiting a museum of my former life. The walls, once familiar, now fell confining, the air heavy with the ghosts of my past. I had taken nothing with me, leaving it all behind as a testament to the person I once was. The journal, my guide through the darkness, had become a part of me. Its pages were etched in my memory, a constant companion in my solitary existence. It was a link to my past, a reminder of the journey I had undertaken. On the nights when the moon was full, I would return to the clearing where the ritual had taken place. It was a sacred space, a nexus of power where I fell closest to the otherworldly forces that had become a part of me. There, under the watchful gaze of the moon, I would reflect on my transformation, on the journey that had brought me to this point. I had lost much, but I had also gained something immeasurable a purpose, a place in the grand tapestry of existence. The town, with its sleepy streets and unsuspecting residents, continued its rhythm, oblivious to the shadow that watched over it. I was a protector, a silent sentinel guarding against the darkness that threatened to encroach upon their peaceful lives. As I stood there, on the threshold of a new dawn, I realized that my story was not one of loss, but of rebirth. I had been given a second chance, a new life in the shadows. The path ahead was uncertain, fraught with challenges and dangers, but I was ready to face it. The night had become my domain, a realm where I was both master and servant. The darkness was a part of me, a part that I had come to cherish. In the shadows, I had found my true self, and I embraced it without fear or regret. My transformation was complete, but my story was far from over. It was a new beginning, a journey into the unknown. And as the first rays of the sun peeked over the horizon, I turned back to the woods, to the darkness that had become my home. In the shadows, I was free. In the darkness, I was alive. And so, I stepped into the new dawn, a creature of the night, ready to embrace whatever mysteries lay ahead.